Hello and welcome to this video on DNA structure. In this video, we're going to be talking about what the structure of DNA is, how cells read DNA, and then a little bit about alleles. So to start off with, let's recap something we covered in a previous video. DNA carries the code for how the body works. Something we didn't talk about is what DNA actually looks like, and we can see a picture of DNA on the right here. DNA is structured in this shape called a double helix, which we can see here with these two yellow lines twisting around each other and these rungs holding together the two yellow lines. Think of it a little bit like if you took a ladder and you twisted the top of that ladder again and again. The two long parts of the ladder on the left and the right would twist like these yellow lines here, or these rungs would hold the two yellow lines together. The other important thing is that DNA always has this structure in all living things. So all plants and all animals have the same double helix structure to the DNA. So now we know that DNA comes in a double helix, but that doesn't explain how the genetic code works. And think of the genetic code kind of like a language, but for cells. If I was to ask you to read this word on the left, because you can read English, you'll read it and say that it says genetics. Cells can do the exact same thing for DNA molecules, and they do this by reading the information that's on the rungs of the DNA molecule. So you can see the purple one here, the blue one here, the green one here, and so on. Unlike the English alphabet, which has 26 different letters that we can use to make words, the genetic code only has four different pieces of information. It can have an A, a T, a C, or a G, and we'll explain what these are on a later slide. But for now, just know that there are the different types of rung that you can get on a DNA molecule, and they're represented here by purple, blue, red, and green. So if we were to replace this word genetics, and instead get the cell to tell us what it reads as it goes down the DNA, it might say something like this. So I'd read the purple, the blue, the green, and the purple rungs and tell you that the code read A, T, C, A. And to us, this means nothing. But to a cell, it carries parts of very important instructions that allow it to make proteins. The other thing we need to remember is that one rung represents one letter of this genetic code. So a rung will never have more than one letter on it. It will be an A, a T, a C, or a G. Now what does the cell do with this four letter code? Well, if we were reading an instruction manual, we'd read the letters and turn them into words. We'd then turn those words into sentences, those sentences into paragraphs, and then those paragraphs into instructions so we could do what we wanted to do. Cells work the exact same way. They just go down reading the rungs until they have enough instructions that they can create a protein. And the amount of DNA that's required to give enough instructions to make a protein is called a gene. So this is how they all link together. But if we were to zoom in on some DNA, we wouldn't actually see the letter A, T, C, and G sitting on the rungs. It doesn't work like that. So in order to work out what the cell's actually reading, we need to go a bit deeper into DNA structure. And when we do that, we realize DNA comes in sections. And these sections are made up of three things, a phosphate molecule, a sugar molecule, and a base. And this is the level of detail you need to know this stuff in, so you don't need to know much about it. These three bits of DNA fit together like this. So we have a phosphate attaching to a sugar, which is then attaching to a base. And this individual DNA section can combine with a whole bunch of others like this. So we can see that it goes from phosphate to sugar, to phosphate to sugar, to phosphate to sugar. And these bases are just chilling out in the middle. If you do this hundreds of times, you end up with this structure here, where we have what we call the backbone of the DNA, where this gray line is just a whole bunch of phosphates and sugars stuck together. And hanging out in the middle, we can see our nitrogen bases. And there are four different possible nitrogen bases that could be attached to each section. And the names of these bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, which is where we get A, T, C, and G from. Now, how these four bases look isn't particularly important, so imagine them like they're four bits of Lego. These bits of Lego are very similar, but they have slight differences in how they connect. And these slight differences mean that only certain pairs can fit together, adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine. If we try and put the wrong pairs together, we get something like this happening. Kind of like two bits of Lego that don't quite fit together, we can see that the two bases don't quite attach properly and they leave this white gap in the middle. However, when we attach the correct pair, it looks something like this, where we have cytosine and guanine fitting together perfectly and making this DNA strong. 
You might be wondering, why is this important? Well, it allows us to get this structure here, where we have the A's attaching to the T's and the C's attaching to the G's to form our double helix, rather than just having a single helix here. And so now we know everything we need to know about DNA structure. We know that the cell comes in and it reads the order of the bases in order to get this code A, T, C, and G. For example, a cell would come in and it'd read this code as an A, a G, a C, an A, and a C. And while this doesn't mean anything to us, to cells, it's very important as part of their instructions. And it keeps reading the order of these bases until it has enough information to build a protein. And we call this a gene. So the important word we need to know here is base sequence. And this is just the order of the bases on a DNA strand. And now you might be wondering, what happens if we get the same gene, but there's a slightly different base sequence. So you can see here that on the left, we have the base sequence A, G, C, A, C. And on the right, we have the sequence T, G, C, T, C, which is mostly similar, but the A's and the T's have swapped around. Well, when this happens, we have a different base sequence causing us to have a different version of the same gene. Both of these genes still code for hair color, but one codes for ginger hair, or the other codes for brown hair. And this happens because of differences in the base sequence or the order of the bases. We call these differences alleles. So an allele is a different version of the same gene. So to have an allele, you need to have a specific trait. For example, hair color. And the alleles are the different versions of the hair color gene. For example, ginger hair, brown hair, blonde hair, or black hair. These all have slightly different base sequences, causing the protein that's made to be slightly different and causing them to have a different trait. It's also really important to remember that no matter what allele someone has, it is always found on the same place on the same chromosome. So let's just say this was chromosome number one. The hair color trait will always be on the same place on chromosome number one, no matter what allele a person has. So whether they're ginger hair, brown hair, blonde hair, or black hair, the gene for hair color will always be in the same place. So what do you need to know from this video? Well, you need to know that DNA is code for how the body works. It's structured in a double helix, and there are sections of DNA which are made up of phosphates, sugars, and bases. It looks something like this, and we need to remember we get our double helix because the A's compare with T's and the C's compare with G's, while this phosphate and sugar forms the backbone. We need to know that cells can read the order of these bases. And by reading this four letter code, the cell can get instructions on what protein to make. Changing the base sequence sometimes makes absolutely no difference, but sometimes it can give you a different version of the same trait. And we call this an allele. An allele is a different version of the same gene. This gene is still on the same place on the same chromosome. Each version of the gene or each allele has a slightly different base sequence. So if you can describe the structure of DNA and how it fits together, how a cell can read this genetic code and what an allele is, then you know everything you need to for this video.